This is Darkest Ends, 2011 edition, recorded on Winter Solstice Evening of the Full Moon. I'm here with Warlock Draconis Blackthorn, creator of Shomantium, Haunted Noctuary, Satanic Serenades, and Opus Draconum. How did you come up with the name we all know you by? Well, uh, it is actually a mix of um, show business and personal integration. When I first uh, actually it dawned on me that uh, I resonate personally with the archetype of the dragon, as well as uh, Blackthorn was sort of a mix of other names I was considering, and it all just came together. Uh, one day it just uh, clicked. Next thing I knew, there I was uh, deciding to perform my satanic baptism in order to uh, fully grant myself the devil's mark, as it were, as a formal gesture. And so uh, it was a very magical sort of uh, combination of factors. And, uh, yeah, plus it's very memorable, and uh, it has served me very well. So can you tell us more about this baptism of fire you were mentioning? Not actually a baptism of fire. However, it's straight out of the satanic rituals. And uh, when that was completed, I attempted to replicate it as exactly as possible. It was a very powerful rite, in which uh, I accepted my chosen name and made a formal gesture of affiliation with my self after uh, joining with the Infernal Empire, most potent and effectual. Yes, I personally conducted the baptism from a, a formal gesture of affiliation with myself and the Church of Satan, in which point you take the symbolic devil's mark, in which I took my uh, personal name unto myself, a taken name, which I feel is much more meaningful than uh, what is given to you by your parents who obviously may or may not share your proclivities. All right, tell me about how you first found the COS. Well, I discovered it through, uh, at a library, actually, when I was uh, seeing some of the history, those old magazines that uh, had pictures of Dr. LeVay during various rituals. And uh, this is way before, obviously, uh, I was of age to join, but I definitely uh, looked forward to it. Found it very fascinating. And uh, when the opportunity arose, I knew it had to be done. Up until then, I read that pas- passage in the Satanic Rituals about uh, if you're not of age yet, just keep your um, resolve strong and follow the principles until you're able. So what were the first few uh, books of the doctor's you've read, and the initial impressions that were made on you? First read the Satanic Bible. Uh, Actually found it at a B. Delton bookseller. I wasn't looking for anything of the type. However, when I spotted it, uh, there was something very compelling. So uh, I purchased it. Uh, Of course, there was always the ubiquitous look of uh, discontent or disturbance upon the teller which was always amusing. Then I took it home and read it pretty much in one sitting. And uh, again, I realized I was a Satanist. And of course, that led to all the other acquisitions, followed by the Satanic Rituals. And uh, when it was re-released, the Satanic Witch, of course, when it came out, the Devil's Notebook, and of course, Satan Speaks. And uh, in between that, of course, uh, any magazines I could uh, acquire, like the Black Flame, which was always enhancing. You're currently known for a lot of your offerings from the dark side, but before you found the Doctor's material, what were the things you were creating that was akin to that? And then upon discovering the COS, what were your initial creative projects? Well, my creative projects were what I was doing in school, which was basically uh, a lot of creative writing and uh, artistry, always writing poetry. And uh, 
So at the time, of course, I was uh, been, being always attracted to the horror genre. I was uh, creating a lot of imaginative uh, fiction, which uh, I tried to add a little bit more of a psychological bent to it rather than just slasher type of content. So, uh, and, and, and natural predispositions, basically, uh, which I saw echoed in the Satanic Bible, eventually. And uh, it was some of it was, uh, say, music based, but uh, and definitely reading up on uh, philosophers, uh, various writers who a lot of it just sort of almost naturally, uh, or perhaps. Uh, almost paranormally, uh, as it were, came into my uh, presence. And I would later come to discover that these things perhaps were on the COS list or, um, you know, as well as films. So it sort of uh, became a, a natural gravitation towards various subject matter, which enhanced already what I was experimenting with. So it uh, seemed to be like a part of the evolutionary process. Can you give us some specific details about this material? Well, uh, spending a lot of time in libraries, uh, probably one of the very first ones was the Man, Myth, and Magic Encyclopedia. It looked very compelling. I went and uh, read all, all I could, practically the whole series, and uh, read about all these fascinating personages. Uh, therein, which of course led me to uh, cross-referencing what they had available, uh, and I would find, say, uh, Nietzsche, uh, fantasy-based, as well as uh, that which is um, more of a de facto nature, say, um, Ragnar Redbeard, uh, which stemmed off of uh, other subject matter. But the many times the paranormal aspects of what was presented in that publication uh, enhanced perhaps what I may have been experimenting with, but uh, led towards deviations, say, from the greater magical applications into uh, philosophical reflections of it. And, uh, of course, finding additional material which enhanced that, of course, which led to the Satanic Bible as well. I would see a lot of uh, reflections, perhaps, of some of the material that Doctor was referencing in subsequent publications of his, which uh, I may have already uh, encountered, which I did, and, of course, uh, which led to further investigation. Basically, uh, what I found was experimenting with looking at various aspects of the occult, say, uh, through whether it be, at the time, Tarot, or the uh, I Ching, or even the Kabbalah, I found uh, perhaps many interesting aspects of these belief systems and references which could be, shall we say, Satanized to personal um, creation, to make it more uh, giving the devil his due, considering all these uh, white lighters were, uh, since immemorium, twisting in order to uh, make it more subservient to them, but um, it became more of a personalization, uh, satanizing certain subject matter in order to reflect one's own psychology, instead of keeping it in a, in a box in a, in a pre-programmed sort of um, reflection of them. It's more, to, you know, to in, in apply it towards personalized um, expression and application, say. There definitely are certain segments which can be used in order to uh, enhance one's own greater magical purposes. And please excuse the ongoing technical difficulties throughout this interview as we have been recording during storms, rain, overcast clouds, and other beautiful chaos to some. Even though you're very well known amongst the Infernal Empire, where can we find your various works? Uh, my works can be located at shadowmantium.com, which contains all the resources 
which will lead you to various sections. There are the the Malefic Music, which goes to my reviews. There are uh, the Spectrium, which goes to film reviews. And the Satan Scroll, in which you can read my uh, book reviews. The podcast is the Haunted Noctuary, which has been available for a while. However, I uh, haven't uh, had a new one for a little bit, when time permits, of course. Uh, many different sources. The Blackthorn Productions will link you to the literature and the uh, the CD as well. It is all available on shadowmantium.com. Okay, can you tell us more about this uh, CD that you mentioned? It is entitled Narrations from the Abyss. These are um, obviously narrations uh, combined with background music, uh, the narrations of my works, uh, the first few chapters, which you can find in The Devil's Scroll. Eventually, these will be divided into various subsequent chapters, as time permits, of... uh, Basically, you can read along once uh, you acquire the literature, if you wish. Can you give us your definition of what a warlock is? My personal definition is uh, one who has achieved, according to uh, the being observed, say, by uh, those who are more advanced in the Church of Satan, granting you that sense of acknowledgement for what you have done, and uh, otherwise, those who have the, the the innate perspective and powers, as it were, of psychological manipulation, um, all these ingrained abilities, in order to apply them in an effective manner. Then, what are some of your choice weapons in applying that idea? Psychological manipulation. Uh, definitely uh, towards those who may uh, either deserve it or those who would serve your purposes that would be probably uh, members of the herd of course mutual respect is afforded towards those who you consider of uh, one's equals or or shall we say uh, respectable peers. So earlier you were mentioning the word paranormal. Uh, Have you had any experiences in regards to what this definition holds? Certainly, regularly, actually. Uh, Specifically stemming from one's uh, greater magical practices, either in the immediate vicinity and time of the Operation or uh, stemming therefrom, sort of um, creating, uh, as it were, footprints in reality. Uh, it's echoing effect. So uh, things, you know, of course, maybe that other Satanists can relate to, such as the uh, growing candle flame or the, uh, the sensation of a presence that uh, is more likely a projection of one's uh, psyche. Uh, Residual effects therefrom, uh, depending upon the context of the rite, uh, perhaps someone who you've been focusing upon contacting you or appearing in your in your in, you know your presence, uh, as well as uh, experiencing certain sensory stimulus, sort of uh, even an olfactory. Uh, residue of uh, sweetness, say, uh, after after conducting uh, a compassion ritual, or um, even uh, impressions derived uh, during a destruction ritual, for instance, of um, total the annihilation of an enemy, and even receiving news in the most bizarre, apparently, manners, unexpectedly. I seem to always receive news of those who uh, have uh, somehow either are considering uh, negative uh, situations towards me. Or, uh, like I mentioned before, uh, there always seems to be a uh, 
residual effect of confirmation, one way or the other, uh, considering that one is flowing with uh, the impression that you have created this reality of the is to be. And thus it comes full circle and uh, your satisfaction is uh, fulfilled in that respect. So obviously this is beyond coincidence. Um, it would be known as synchronicity, a kind of engineering, would you say? Definitely a personal engineering of reality as you wish to see it. The is to be. You uh, create this prototype and materialize it via your visualization within the context of the right and the subsequent fulfillment through practical application. Last night, the COS news page was updated for the winter solstice, and you were among the highlights therein. Can you tell us about what was noted? Yes, I'm very pleased to say that uh, with very much appreciation to Magus Gilmore and all those who are responsible, the Opus Draconum is available thereon, which are the complete works of my uh, literature as well as the CD, which uh, now for Saturnalia, as it were, those that are interested can go and purchase the works for a condensed price, as well as the Shadow Gallery calendar uh, included therein and separately, of course, which uh, details many of the historical events which may be of interest, uh, usually of a nefarious nature, uh, considering our predispositions. Um, along with uh, birthdays, nativities, the moon phases, of course, uh, our major holidays, the equinoxes, solstices, and uh, even more. Can you tell us your idea of the Saturnalia, and what did you mean by historical events? Well, Saturnalia, or Saturnalia, is a personal variation on Saturnalia. I thought that, uh, for me at least, it uh, brings it more, say, on a personal level, more of a resonant archetypal relation to the philosophy and otherwise current celebration, which uh, perhaps can add a bit more of a um, resonant connection, a psychological enhancement. And the historical events... These are just various uh, events, say, that uh, we may have found of interest, uh, personally anyway, of the uh, the event where Vlad, say, Tepes feasted, you know, among the uh, those he were, was punishing. Or um, the 666 High Mass, for example, is listed, as well as uh, others which uh, I imagine would be of interest towards others of our disposition. I'd initially heard about the term Saturnalia from Magister Nemo. I was wondering where you had heard about it first, or if you coined the term in your own way. Oh, yeah, that, that was it. I came up with that myself, and I hadn't heard Magister Nemo's uh, mention of it. No, uh, that's that's... That's the story behind my uh, mention of Satanalia or Satanalia. And how have you found the moon phases noteworthy and applicable? Well, the moon phases, this would be what uh, you yourself would find uh, stimulating. So uh, for me, I see the moon phases as perhaps uh, in a semi-traditional sense, say uh, when, when, it, when it is waxing. It uh, perhaps may be more uh, what you wish to occur in that period, or, or uh, it's waning, of course, uh, inclusive of the full moon and the what I call the black moon, or, or the new moon, uh, which might be psychologically uh, enhancing to consider it, say, a, a, a more of a destruction, and the full moon more of a fulfillment. Again, this would be according to uh, your psyche. If you find uh, use in referring to these uh, 
moon phases, uh, according to your rights or uh, your various other purposes, then uh, by all means, apply it. Since you mentioned the high mass and that was such a high, like, can you give us um, your take on it? I know that you had um, posted something on your site. Maybe you can give people direction how to get there and then any other additions you'd like to mention about the event. Certainly. My impressions can be reached uh, at my site, shadowmantium.com. Once you arrive at the link list, just click on the Black Earth and uh, then Church of Satan High Mass, along with um, a lot of other content, various experiences, uh, places that I think would uh, is of relevant interest. There's a lot of content on that page. Just click on the various uh, titles. Well, once at the uh, Church of Satan High Mass review, there I have uh, the, the scan, actually, of the the was given out to the various members as a schedule of events, uh, as well as a description and a video, which I uploaded uh, for preservation of this event, which was the uh, Channel 2 uh, coverage. So looking back on 2010, what were your achievements, noteworthy happenings, and LTTD posts you've done that you've been proud of? I actually was very pleased to uh, release a compendium called The Devil's Diaries, which uh, listed a, uh, a, many of the essays, almost all of them, that were uh, submitted by those who uh, participated in The Devil's Diary magazine. And uh, most of what is relative to the Infernal Empire is on the news page. And uh, besides that, in Letters to the Devil... Uh, of recent note, I would say uh, the dark side of Christmas, actually. Uh, I found that there were many uh, different uh, variations and uh, evolutions in the Christian, uh, the Christmas myth, which uh, would prove to be very interesting, and perhaps uh, even small bits that might be useful uh, towards others here. And uh, the fascinating characters and uh, the development. The uh, I recently even added some... Uh, uh, new media sources for those who wish to uh, become amused that are of a, of a black humor vein. We'll be going into a quick ad break and then on to more questions after that. Have you ever felt that there was a level above being human? Do you feel as though you were better than most mortals? If the answer is yes, Please explore the Temple of the Vampire, www.vampiretemple.com. The Temple of the Vampire. Are you one of us? The Satanic Scriptures hands down the wit, wisdom, and diabolical perspective of the Church of Satan's High Priest, Magus Peter H. Gilmore. These essays, articles, and diatribes have been collected from over 20 years of the High Priest's writings for his Infernal Cabal, some first issued in the pages of publications available only to insiders. From the magic of toys to techniques of time travel, Magus Gilmore leads the reader down a left-hand path where few will find what they expect. Magus Gilmore reveals principles of satanic ritual in a frank discussion of forbidden rites. What is a satanic funeral? How do Satanists marry? Find out now, as these unholy ceremonies have never been disclosed outside of the Church of Satan's hellish hierarchy. Here is the philosophy for those bold enough to be their own gods or devils. Visit thesatanicscriptures.com for more information. Released by Scapegoat Publishing. Available in paperback form from major booksellers and independents nationwide. You are listening to Radio Free Satan. I am Nereus. Help keep Radio Free Satan free by using the PayPal donate button. The first 13 people to donate $50 or more will receive Peter H. Gilmore's Trinity for Humanity CD. Thanks for listening, and hail Satan.
going back in time, what were your middle ground contributions that were archived over the years in the official COS page? Um, I remember you were offering rosaries, mirrors, and Ouija's for a time. Yes, actually, uh, the Devil's Cord. Uh, this was an idea based upon the rosary, but more so the uh, Witch's Cord. And, of course, satanizing these objects towards personal preference. Uh, to have a, an actual uh, tangible device that you can grip and make a wish upon each individual, say, bead, uh, with a specific purpose in mind. And uh, this offered a, an immediate uh, an intensification of a wish fulfillment. If you can uh, have yourself, for example, in the presence of the person you're trying to affect, or even during the context of the ritual, while uh, concentrating on that uh, particular bead, uh, if it resonates with your psychology, then of course it would intensify the working. The um, Satan's Ouija, this was a device very much in the same idea, is uh, basically uh, exercising your uh, mind's abilities, uh, perhaps to bring it to a higher level of potency, if you're so inclined, uh, to sharpen your senses, uh, perhaps even uh, using the idiomotor effect uh, to define it uh, and, uh, say, explore your own dark side within and uh, sharpen those perceptions towards a, a sensation or a feeling of perspective in which to sharpen your ultimate result. The uh, Lucifer's Mirror was another one that uh, I endeavored to create, which is basically the idea of a scrying mirror, a black mirror uh, inscribed with a pentagram. The idea of self-deification, being the atheist, in, in to concentrate on your own image, uh, seeing yourself as the God, uh, the highest reflection of one's own um, divinity in order to um, empower your purpose and uh, bring forth, again, a more effective working with your impression upon the ether. Uh, the Devil's Scroll and Dracomeroth were mentioned previously on uh, in past years. Uh, I was able to access a better way of publishing them with uh, added resources in which to bring them forth again. So these are the second printings with some additions and uh, it brings it in a more concise and uh, a thorough manner. And uh, it's all there if you want to see the archived versions uh, which are possessed now by several. So it more or less has become, they've become collector's items. All right, so during our conversation, I've been hearing maybe a familiar or two in the background in your chamber. Can you tell us about some of your demons and uh, pets that you might have? Certainly. Uh, we actually have four cats. Um, these are uh, the gremlins, as I call them. Uh, of course, there's the uh, black cat. Probably uh, my favorite, just uh, from his personality, I can really reflect and uh, relate to him uh, very much many characteristics of myself. And uh, if you've heard a bird, that is actually our phoenix uh, very much. This bird has been alive since as long as I can remember. And uh, so he's, uh, <laughs> he's going to be there for quite a long time. He's actually kind of inspiring. Okay, well, at one point I actually had a goldfish, which I named Leviathan, mostly because of uh, his propensity to eat copious amounts, and which um, his life force was so strong in which uh, to almost uh, echo one's own. And uh, unfortunately, one day when uh, he did pass, I decided to enact my own modif modified funeral form, and... Uh, to which uh, all the pets and familiars that I've had do receive sort of these motions, these these gestures of, uh, of formal recognition uh, for my personal gratification in order to uh, more 
solidify them as you know, a presence, which they are, since a lot of Satanists do take uh, animals as being uh, very profoundly inspirational and, uh, in many cases, uh, ways uh, to learn from, obviously. As doctors said, animals should be our gurus now. And uh, they actually had a tarantula, too. And uh, very much the same manner uh, is these familiars and, and uh, pets do give you a resonant uh, enhancement, as well as a serpent, which I uh, have several of those, uh, which one was, was Midgard, another was Dambala, and uh, these uh, have always been very uh, beautiful uh, creatures to contemplate, and uh, personally I consider the serpent to be uh, a sort of totem, as it were. I've seen many of my own characteristics in them. And uh, I've had a slews. I actually, actually worked at a, um, at, at, at a uh, pet shop for a little bit. And uh, I was able to acquire a wide variety of pets, um, exotic ones uh, or your typical ones. And um, I also had a small stint at a shelter. And uh, this is covered in in, um, in one of the magazines and, and in, the, in the Devil's Diaries, in which uh, I was really sort of um, taken aback by the by the manner in which there's sort of uh, the pets that don't get uh, sold or don't find homes become uh, more or less uh, uh, chattel in order to uh, the, the, there's this horrible. Uh, a substance, uh, and it's very uh, unceremoniously afflicted, in in which uh, it's very uh, in an impersonal manner. And I thought, uh, because of witnessing this type of attitude and uh, seeing that experience, it would enabled me uh, to form a more enhanced appreciation for the uh, our four legged friends. So since we're on the theme of animals, the mythical dragon has been a totemic resonant symbol of yours. Can you elaborate on that? Certainly. Specifically the serpentine variety. Uh, and because it's, uh, I see it more of a, of a personal extension of one's mind and body uh, balance. But for example, for some reason or another, dragons are seen as uh, evil in the West. And something to conquer, or something to uh, defeat, as, uh, representing Satan specifically, or their paradigm of that definition. Whereas in the East, it's very much seen as uh, a, a always powerful, but more with more dimensions. In that, uh, so my uh, perspective is more of a third side perspective on the two, uh, both potentials in one, and it's a. Uh, Specifically black, uh, to add that extra uh, nefarious connotation, but definitely to add perspective in, in uh, relative psychological meaning, definition. Another angle of um, dimensionality in your Shadow Man team site is uh, the video section. Can you detail us more on that? Yes, these are basically uh, psychodramatic expressions of what I felt I didn't see really uh, elsewhere, particularly the Magus Levé tribute. Uh, I've seen a lot of pictures, but to actually put them together in one concise form to give a proper tribute to our founder was, uh, was, it was time to create it. And uh, apparently it's been appreciated from a lot of feedback I've gotten. And I'm very pleased to have uh, presented it. Um, okay, this is a time late in the year where there's a lot of holidays happening. And just around the time we're doing this interview is the winter solstice full moon and total lunar eclipse um, triune that's occurring. Can you tell us uh, what meaning this has to you and what you've been doing around uh, this whole event? Well, what I typically do for holidays is uh, perform some sort of uh, ceremony or gesture. 
many of which I myself have created or whatever I could uh, pick and choose from uh, various combinations of, of, of factors or publications. Uh, but uh, it's usually, you know, if I feel it's appropriate, something from the satanic uh, rituals, uh, something from my own work, like the Dracomeroth, and uh, something which I may create off the cuff. And uh, usually uh, some of the messages that I write, the seasonal greetings, uh, make their way into a, a proper rite for that day. Uh, the Around this time, the Satanalia, which I call it, which is a, a personal um, take on Saturnalia, is um, exactly that. It's a gesture in which to uh, formally recognize the holiday uh, with my aesthetics in mind, as well as that which is available to uh, distill. And uh, so these are basically what I believe probably a lot of uh, Satanists put together uh, they, who are so inclined to uh, greater magical expressions. Um, one of the articles you've written was on Krampus. Can you tell us your take on that and if you've ever done anything around that occasion or any sort of designs, art, um, writing? Well, the, the Krampus is basically a winter devil. Uh, for a long time, he's he's been sort of uh, put away, and, and uh, they try to forget about him. But uh, he's the one that sort of uh, created that balance factor in which to discipline the naughty children, uh, and he, he manifests in all different cultures. The Namahagi, for example, in Japan, uh, these are uh, creatures who uh, scare kids straight in order to be responsible and to not be lazy. And, uh, of course, the Coca-Cola company came along and, cre and just focused on Santa Claus and uh, watered down the image of the, of the Krampus into, uh, say, elves or, or eliminated them altogether. But uh, that's actually where, where the meaning of, of the, the coals came from, is uh, if you were naughty, he would, uh, say, throw coals at you or leave them in your stocking and uh, even uh, whip you with a switch. Uh, times of uh, thorned, but I, I believe this is a valuable uh, balance factor if you're to consider these uh, these aesthetics in order to uh, make the notion of behaving real or more real in the minds at least of those who uh, you know are so inclined that would be frightened by such superstitions. Uh, these are working making superstitions say work for you. And uh, lest they become mere superstitions, as I call them. So, um, and it, it's uh, definitely usable. Perhaps yeah, on the top of, of your uh, of your tree, if you use one, uh, you can place uh, a winged demon. And uh, even if you don't have a tree, I, I came up with this idea of a a witch tree, as it were, which is basically using a, a witch hat and uh, decorating it, since it has a general effect. And uh, for my purposes, it seems much more appropriate of an observation. All right, what did you do this year for Halloween? And with previous Halloweens, do you have an interesting um, occurrence to share with us? This Halloween, I was very busy, actually. I was uh, I had just relocated, so I was uh, before I moved, I was working on the uh, Legend of Devil Lake and uh, almost almost immediately after this relocation, I worked on the uh, Devil's Diary 16. So, uh, of course, uh, any trick or readers, as it were, uh, they you know they're usually quite scant. They seem to consider uh, my residence a bit too scary for trick or treat, as it were. But uh, those that do arrive become uh, well rewarded. Otherwise, uh, if I want to take in some kind of uh, local event, some of the, the fun haunted house type of uh, structures, then, uh, of course, that's always entertaining. And uh, But definitely, besides being busy, there's always some sort of uh, formal gesture of recognition, since it's uh, basically my second favorite holiday, of course, being my birthday being first. But it holds a very evocative uh, sense for me. So, uh, how the party doesn't end after Halloween's over. 
I mean, uh, one of the considerations I had for the Halloween holiday is merely to make it, say, Halloween's birthday, as it were, since uh, many of the elements are more or less a constant. So it remains uh, a very uh, potent uh, expression of, of just fun fear as well as the serious uh, types of uh, events or considerations happen in the privacy of one's own home. All right, continuing on with this theme, we have Walpurgis from early this year. Um, anything happened that was noteworthy for you and maybe previous times? Well, in particular, this last uh, Walpurgisnacht was rather amazing for me. I mean, um, I had conducted my uh, my Walpurgis ritual. I had gotten out, going outside to uh, what I call my Satan's Hollow, which is my uh, personal retreat, as it were. And uh, all of a sudden, while I was enjoying the, the night, a, uh, a sort of light sort of uh, descended. It was almost like a, a lightning sort of uh, manifestation, as it were, an anomaly. And uh, because of that experience, uh, I called it a Walpurgis light, and actually uh, was I had to write a poem about it. <laughs> and uh, but it was uh, quite a, a surprising experience, which uh, I think personally I took as a confirmation of that particular uh, rite I had concluded. And, of course, since then, uh, certain things have come into motion, which I think uh, perhaps are stem stemming from uh, that experience. But uh, besides that, uh, it's always a very uh, powerful experience, uh, whatever the uh, working uh, since you know the energy seems to be much more palpable, more than usual that is, and the so-called gates of hell uh, open, so it's uh, every it, it it behooves one to take advantage of these sensations, uh, which mo more than likely is a combination of your own psychology as well as prevailing energies that uh, may be more intense at the time. Can you tell us more about the light that happened during the ritual? Well, it was seemingly uh, since that experience, I was I was sort of was driven to do some of my research about uh, any likened anomalies, and uh, there's something called the Will o' the Wisp, uh, which has been part of legendary, as it were, and uh, we seem to be perhaps. Um, natural occurrences which happen from time to time uh, Ignis Fatuus is also swamp gas or whatever and uh, since it's not a swamp I thought that uh, perhaps this uh, may have been some sort of uh, the conditions were just right to create such a thing so uh, when it happened I was I just almost enjoyed it uh, when, when certain manifestations occur I just uh, take it as another interesting experience in uh, a slip of them which uh, tend to occur once in a while. Winding down our dialogue, what will you be doing this New Year's Eve and New Year's Day? You know, it being a very mainstream lustful revelry. Some highlights of what you've done previously on this moment, since we've, after all, been reflecting mostly at this time. Let's also do some projecting of what you're looking forward to future projects, some ideas you have, journal entries, things of that sort. I'll be bringing in the New Year grand style, as usual. Uh, definitely a time to uh, assert resolutions, uh, to definitely uh, project of what you wish to bring to manifestation and into your life. So uh, I probably will be doing, uh, again, a, a ritual gesture, uh, probably based upon uh, my uh, creative statements, which I, I place forth upon these certain seasonal times and uh, events. I, I, I always wanted to put out a, a picture book, basically uh, based upon the Shadow Gallery, which uh, will come with its own descriptions. 
and did basic, uh, probably a part two of the um, Opus Inferus, or the uh, Narrations from the Abyss, which we'll be expounding and uh, continuing where I left off in the Devil's Scroll, and perhaps even uh, successive other works. And finally, do you have any parting thoughts to listeners, Iron Youth, and Aspirants? Follow your heart. Stay strong. Always pursue your creative manifestations. And I wish to take this opportunity to thank you very much for uh, having me on your program. And I look forward to uh, your manifestations as well. Hail the Infernal Empire. Hail Satan. All right. Thank you for being on the program. And we'll talk to you again soon. Take care.